when we started this season off, a lot of us, including myself, was very hopeful, thinking, like, this is going to be one of the best, like, NBA seasons of all time. Like, the league is so evenly, <laughs> excuse me, it's so evenly balanced. Like, we're going to see good teams. Like, that's so many championship contenders. We thought off saying that, like, okay, both LA teams are uh, championship contenders. Utah, Denver, Houston. Uh, we also thought that maybe the Trailblazers, because the way they play, they always, like, make find a way to make it work. You can never count the Spurs. Uh, we thought that as well. Some people thought that the Pelicans can, like, sneak into the playoffs, the Warriors. Um, and in the East, we had the Bucks, We had the 76ers. The Celtics, maybe? The, we wasn't really expecting the Nets because KD's not playing. But that's more than, like, let's see. That's that's like, what, 10 or 10 or more, like, uh, contenders out of his name? I don't really count them, so don't don't judge me on that. But like a lot of us, we thought of like this this is gonna be a well balanced season. Now in January, going into February first tomorrow, we only need to see really just three NBA championship contenders, both LA teams and the Bucks. Outside of that, like no other teams are like that dominating or they're like like uh like we're not so sure on like even though. The Nuggets are tied with the Clippers right now for number two seed in the West. We not not everybody is sold on the Nuggets being a championship contenders. They made it to Western Semis last year. They lost to Portland in Game Seven. I don't know, CJ McCollum, I guess. But <laughs> oh my, my guess. But not not everybody's sold on the Nuggets being championship contenders. They're still re- they still relatively young. Um, I think Michael Porter is playing well right now, and I think eventually, the more he plays, I think. Next season, <laughs> I know everybody's like, ah, oh, this next season stuff. I think next season maybe they'll have a chance. But this season, I don't see them beating the Clippers or the Lakers if they see them in the playoffs. I don't see that happening. I really don't. Not in a seven-game series. Uh, the Jazz, I definitely don't see that happening. The Rockets, we just talked about them. Their defense is abysmal. I don't see them beating the Clippers or the, or the Lakers in the seven-game series. Um, the Mavericks, they the number six uh, seed in the West, which – I'll give credit. My friend George, he 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 saw them being in the playoffs uh this year. I didn't really see that. And like Luka Doncic, yes, he's a great player. Uh we see that now who's obviously an MVP candidate and Christoph Rosinga's and the way that Rick Carlisle's been coaching that team and how they uh become like one of the top uh teams in the league in in terms of like shooting threes and just their offensive efficiency. We didn't see that coming. But they're playing really well. But I don't see them beating, like I said, any of those teams. Not the Lakers, not the Clippers in a seven game series. Cause they got some young pieces on that team. And it's gonna take a time for it's gonna take time for them to really gel. And I was hearing them talk about the game before I came over here today. Talk about like how Kristaps is there. He's playing good, but like he's not playing like the Kristaps we saw in New York. And we know, like if you see these players coming off these big injuries, like we've seen Gordon Hayward and Paul George come off their big injuries, there it'll take about two seasons after they come back. To really get back to their full selves, like we see Gordon Hayward playing really well this year. I think he didn't do too well last season, coming off his nasty uh, leg injury that he suffered in the first game of the season of what was that 2017 season against the Cavs. And we saw Paul George when he snapped his leg at the Team USA exhibition. We seen how he played after he came back, and he progressively got better. So it just takes time. So Porzingis will, in in theory, will be a better player come next season. And just seeing him and Luka play together is going to be just crazy to watch. Because they already got a good team right now with some good pieces around them. I say they, they get a, a couple more pieces. Tim Hardaway is playing good this year as well. Or Dorian Finney-Smith has stepped up. They lost Dwight Powell uh, what, like last week to Achilles injury. Um, so we're seeing some of the pieces that they have. I think next season they'll be better. They'll be a better team. But not this season. They're not ready. The Thunder, shockingly, they're in the playoffs too. But as we – like. As we see, as we going down, as I'm going down this uh, standings, like the the requirements to get in the playoffs in the West, because we we always talk about the Western Conference being like, oh, this is such a dominant, this is such a dominant conference. Like, how can anybody beat like anybody in the West? Like, it's so hard to get in the playoffs. Like, now looking at it, the Thunder are in the playoffs with a 29 and 20 record. Okay, but at the AC, this is where it's like, all right, people can hop in here. At the AC, we have the Grizzlies. Who, nobody, who thought the Grizzlies were going to be in the playoffs this year? So far, like who? I'm waiting. 
Not me. I didn't think that. With John, I like John. I'm a big John Morant fan. Shout out John Morant. I saw him play at EKU last year. Good guy. I like him. He's gonna be a star in this league. <laughs> who like who thought they, that they would be in the playoffs right now? They have a record of 24 and 25. Uh, when's the last time we saw a below 500 team in the Western Conference in playoff contention? What? Like when? Like I remember last season. Teams was fighting to get in the West Conference last season with the Clippers, the Kings, and the, I think it was them two. It was another team. If I might not be thinking right now, but like just it like how and you have below them, the Spurs is looking outside the playoffs, which I hope they don't because then they'll ruin the streak that they had for being in the playoffs for about what twenty years or like twenty seasons I should say so or, or, or more. Like that would be crazy if the Spurs they twenty one twenty six. So unless they get go on a run or something, or I, I don't know. The Trailblazers, they they out the playoffs. They number like I said, they had ten seed with twenty one and twenty seven. Then you have like the Suns, who's twenty and twenty seven, and the Pelicans, who I thought maybe <laughs> would sneak into the playoffs at number eight. Maybe not actually. No, I didn't. I didn't think they was gonna make it. I, I had them as a hopeful. So it, like at a number nine, but like I, I didn't think Zion's get hurt. And he's just now coming back and they're actually playing really well. Brandon Ingram, who is an All Star, <laughs> shout out, shout out, shout out, one fifty bi man. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I didn't see, I didn't see Brandon Ingram becoming an All Star, but I know Laker, Laker Nation is like fuming right now because uh, where's Cal Kuzma? <laughs> Lazo is starting to play well too. So like, yeah, just looking at that, just in the West, like what. What teams outside the Lakers and the Clippers do you really see getting to the finals? Like, be like, like I said, I'm a rock. I am partially a Rockets fan because of Russell Westbrook. So that is a team I root for. I am a fan of the Nuggets as well. Not like an actual like who raw who raw fan of the Nuggets, but I always liked them just for forward years. I like their style of play. They always been fast paced and they always been fun to watch throughout the years. From Carmelo to uh, AI when AI Melo was there. To when uh, Ty Lawson was there, with Kenneth Reed, Nico Dollar, Randy Foy, just different. Play- like I don't, I just liked them for years. I don't know why. I don't know. And the Nuggets is also a cool name to me, and their colors are cool. I don't know. It sounds childish, but <laughs> but who else really seen them? Like who else? Who else do you see in that? And then if we go to the Eastern Conference, like the Bucks, who I didn't even think was gonna be as good this year. I I thought with them losing, Malcolm Brogdon would hurt them a bit. But this team got better. <laughs> they gotten better with the, like what they have. So they got they lost Brogdon. They um they had everybody else to stay there. They lost who else? They lost another a good bench player too. Um, damn, I don't I can't think of it right now. My my mind's blank for it. But we all thought they wasn't gonna be the number one team in the East. We all thought that was gonna belong to the Seventy Sixers. But the Bucs have the best record in the league right now, 41-6. And I say Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to be MVP again because how can you deny, how can you deny this man's play? Like, he has the best record in the league. He has crazy numbers. Going on last time I said, he was like, what, 30 points, uh, what, 15 re- uh, rebounds or, or like 12 rebounds a game? I, just, uh, I said 15. That's Jesus, this man had 15 rebounds? God, about 12 rebounds a game, has the highest PER in NBA history. Like, What? Man, this guy's crazy. Like, he's carrying, like, this team. And we've seen them play well without Giannis being there. Like, last week, Chris Milton dropped 51 points. Who I didn't think is going to be an all-star again this year. He's still somehow being an all-star because he hasn't been playing as well. But he's stepping up recently. And, like, this team is a well-coached team under Mike Budenholz, and they got some good pieces around them. With Eric Bledsoe, George Hill, Wesley Matthews was a good addition. Kyle Corver. They got Robin Lopez as well as Brooke Lopez, who's been there. So we and we've seen these pieces going around Giannis. And like it's you there's nobody, there's no other team in the East who I can see right now beating them. We have the Raptors at number two, who I didn't see even being in the top ten this year, coming off of losing Kawhi. Pascal Siakam is playing like an MVP candidate. Not top five, as some people would say, but he's 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 like number seven, if you want to do a top ten list of MVP candidates. But he's playing really well. Uh, and just that team in general, you haven't – I think last time I checked, I think Pascal was averaging 23 points, I think, last time I checked. Um, and you have Kyle Lowry, who's got named All-Star, 
who's averaging 20 points, and he just broke the record for becoming an all-time assist leader in Toronto Raptors history. And I think he's trailing in points to uh, Vince Carter, Chris Bosh, and DeMar DeRozan, which I can see him breaking. Which is not, which is, it's not going to be some hard. I can see him breaking that eventually. He stays with that team. If after they just gave him that one uh, that one year extension for like what thirty five billion dollars that he signed in the off season, um, so Masai Ujiri shout out to him because he put this team together and they still playing well and shout out to Nick Nurse who's coaching this team and the players on his team as well Fred Van Vliet, uh, we seen Serge Ibaka is still on the team he's still playing well, um, uh, I haven't those are like just key players I know off the top of my head that's playing well OG Ananobi who stepped back up in the starting lineup I think last time I checked they got Ronnie Hollis Jefferson in the summer. Uh, they got a couple other rookies too, but this has been a, a well played team this year. The Celtics, um, they got thirty two to fifteen. They playing real well too. Um, a lot of people saying, "Oh, they playing better without Kyrie." That's a whole argument for a different day. I'm not because I'm getting tired of people saying that's not on Kyrie. It's really not. But they're playing well. The Heat, who uh, last time I checked, they was number two, but now they're number four in the East with a thirty two and fifteen record. Who are playing surprisingly well. Nobody's I didn't see them being in this high in, in the East. I saw them making the playoffs like at number seven, number eight. But at number four, they playing real well with two all stars on their team, uh Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler, obviously. Uh Tyler Harrow is playing real good as a rookie. Shout out to Tyler Harrow. Uh Kendrick Nunn, who's playing surprisingly well too. I didn't I don't know who, where this guy came from. He's playing real well. They got a guy, Duncan Robinson as well, Kelly Olenek, uh Myers Leonard. Um, they got uh Silva, the guy's first, and they got that guy too. They and Eric Spolsch, of course, is a championship coach. Pat Riley is a championship ran organization. So from top to bottom, it's just a good organization, and it makes you think. I heard some rumblings. I heard some rumblings that if the Bucks can't get it done. Will we see John Santacupo go to South Beach or Golden State to be exact? I don't know. I just keep that in mind, people. My Indiana Pacers are number five uh, with 31-17. Victor Oladipo just came back on uh, Wednesday against the Chicago Bulls, uh, hitting a three to go to overtime, actually, where the, the Pacers won that game. Shout out to Oladipo. Glad you're back, son. Uh, looking forward to to a good season because we've been playing good without Oladipo. And the Pacers, they've been they've been a consistent team, um, just playing well. So bonus is named for a first-time All-Star on that team as well. Brogdon is on that <laughs> Excuse me, a lot of burps today. <laughs> Malcolm Brogdon is on that team as well. Uh, and then we got the 76ers, who a lot of people picked to come out the East this year. Uh, well, no, that's not what I wanted, people. Let me go back. Uh, who a lot of people picked to come out the East this year. I kind of did too. But one glaring thing as I watched them play and just in general, they are a big team, but they can't shoot. They can't shoot at all. They really, like, I watched them play. Like live and they're not a good like shooting team. Uh, you have Ben Simmons who've been playing really well without Joel Embiid, and a lot of these questions have been going around for these past couple seasons. But this season, it's probably a little bit more evident. It makes you wonder: Would they need to trade Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid? Because with Ben Simmons not being able to shoot as well, and now you have the addition of Al Horford who can space the floor, but he can play inside the paint as well. Um. It makes you wonder with them with the way these two play, and like I said, Ben Simmons not being able to shoot, can they coexist? Or do we have to get rid of one or the other? And who would you keep? Which is a good question. I consistency wise, Ben Simmons is better because he hasn't he doesn't get hurt as much, and he's a point. And he's such a like we don't see us like he's seven by like six foot ten, almost seven foot point guard. With his ball, like his his way he plays in transition, and his passing ability, and like just having such a big guard, such a as just a good person to have. And he's 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 good, averaging what sixteen eight and eight. He's good with Joel and B, who's been considered like one of the best centers in the league. Like you, it makes you like uh, I don't know, man. I I don't know on that one. I. Uh, Let's see how Joel Embiid plays the rest of this season. I'll go from there because, I don't know, because Joel is really good too. But like I said, he gets hurt a lot. And that can hurt a team, especially if you get rid of Ben Simmons because Lord knows if Ben Simmons wasn't there, God, that team would be abysmal, at least in my eyes. Because Tobias Harris, <laughs> highway, highway robbery of the century, man. $180 million contract. <laughs> but what? <laughs> 
But what what do he do? What do he do to get 180 million? I don't know. You got your money, player. Salute to you, dog. But hey, I don't know. The Nets are number seven uh, with 21 and 26. Nobody really expected them to be as good this year without Kevin around. I mean, yeah, with Kyrie, he's there, but he missed about 27, 28 games now after missing uh, the game against the Knicks earlier this week. Um, he's they have they haven't been playing as well, and they're still trying to figure it out. And that whole controversy of like Kyrie's comments that he made a couple weeks ago talking about they need one or two pieces to compete for a championship, which I believe so too, because people will say, "Oh well, well Kyrie, he he's there, he should step up the team," but it's like. We see how they play without Kyrie Dyer. And people are like, oh, well, they were the sixth seed last season with D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. I mean, that was they linger around the same, like, the same, like, area, same seeding as they was last year with without Kyrie. And now Kyrie's back, and he's playing more consistently. I will hope they get better and maybe rise to a fifth seed. But if that happens, I hope the Pacers rise up so they don't fall. Um, but... Championship expectations was not one of their things this season. They not they wasn't going this season expecting championship expectations. This is kind of like a trial run to see like how the team is going to run with Kyrie. Because when Kevin Durant comes back next season, they a championship contender. Like it's that's Kevin Durant. Granted, he tore his Achilles. Kevin Durant with a tore Achilles, he'll I'll say at most this man averaged twenty five. He averages twenty five. Put up I say I think he'll get like what seven rebounds, about what, four assists. That's still pretty efficient. And you know Kevin Durant's an efficient, very efficient guy. And just having him on the floor, it's, it's a game changer. Going alongside with Kyrie, Spencer Dinwiddie, um, and those other guys like Jared Allen. And uh, it was the channel coming back to Garrett Temple. Like, it's uh, Joe Harris. Like, it just, they got some good players, but it's just, they just got to find a way to just get it together. And the Magic that at the eighth seed, they always make the playoffs uh, at least some way, somehow. They... I don't know, I don't pay too much attention to them. My cousin's a big fan of the Magic. But, hey, that's not my team. But, yeah, that's just, like, the whole point of, like, there's really only three championship contenders now when we really just look at it. There's only three just championship contenders. So, it's like, is is this what we thought the season was going to be like? No. Is the playoffs still going to be interesting? I believe so. I think there's still going to be some good matchups in the earlier rounds. But as, as the games progress and as we get to the later rounds, we know – in my mind, it's gonna be the Clippers and the Bucks. That's what I think it's gonna be. I, unless they find a way to beat Giannis again in the playoffs and like slow him down and get him out the paint. Which which team will do that? I don't know. The Celtics is too small to me. The Raptors. Oh, if the Raptors beat them again. Oh wow, that'd be crazy. Um, the Heat, they're small too. Uh, I don't think I don't see them doing that. So, I don't know. I. I say the Clippers win the championship this year. I don't care what you Lakers fans think. I don't care what some of you basketball pundits think either because of Kobe's death, that the Lakers are gonna go harder, LeBron will go harder. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George are fans of Kobe Bryant as well. And they're also a better team than the Lakers. They're going to the championship. And they will win. Mark my word. 